Ah, come on in, yes, of course. Take a seat. It's uh, very nice to see you again. Yes, um, I think the last time we were here, I taught you that you should get your head examined. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I, we have a, a course of four different treatments, but we wanted to do the the deep dive first, didn't we? Are there, have there been any significant changes to your health since we last spoke? Oh, it seems like a while ago now. No? Very good. So what we'll be doing to you today um, is, well, two things, two modern sciences. The first is phrenology. Cutting edge stuff, for sure, phrenology. And the second thing we will be doing, well, we'll get onto that, but that's an element of palmistry. Um, phrenology, of course, is to do with the shape of the head, what lumps we have, where. You can have both diagnostic and active phrenology where you can change the bumps, but um, we will just be doing very simple active phrenology. Uh, inactive phrenology, sorry, diagnostic only. And I will take notes throughout. I'll work out your right ascension and things like that. It'll help inform the other therapies that we have you down for. Um, I actually consider myself quite an expert in this because I, I studied under Professor Fowler actually for, for three years in America before I had to flee back to England. Sorry, not flee. Um, what's the word? Calmly return back to England. Yes, he's quite a genius, uh, Professor Fowler. He lives in a hexagonal house, you know. Well, at least he did until all those lawsuits that were taken against him. Oh, no, I'm sure nothing to do with that. No, that's something separate, I'm sure. Yes, and I like to just um, read from the back here. Um, Fowler's notes, he puts this on everything, and he says, For 30 years, I have studied crania. He doesn't quite sound like that, he has more of a, For 30 years, I have studied crania. I can't do the accent, but uh, it's a rather interesting accent. Anyway, for 30 years, I have studied crania and living heads from all parts of the world, and have found in every instance, there's every instance, Every instance, not, not an instance he went by that didn't uh, work. Um, there was a perfect correspondence between confirmation of a healthy skull of his individual and his individual known characteristics. Yes, so he's made his observations available via this superior quality bust and he marks it in accordance with the organs of his research and uh, his experience, his varied experience. Now this has been tested, peer-reviewed, um, and it has found to be incredibly scientific and very accurate. So what I'll be doing is I'll be coming in close, okay, and then I shall check certain parts of the head. So for example, here might be, and I'm not going to check this, but this part here is connectedness. And this part here is love of animals. Yes, yeah, so I'll be checking these various parts. The second part of the test is also, well, it's an old art, but it has been used um, and updated quite recently scientifically, and that's palmistry. We'll get on to palmistry, but right now I'm just going to... Oh, two seconds. Yes, I wish I knew what that was for. Okay, so I'm going to start with under the eye here, okay? And this is the area of languages. Oh, 
Right Ascension 56. Curvature 12. Okay, so this suggests to me that you are quite an expert in languages. Your written skills are exemplary. You do not have the quickest grasp of foreign languages, I don't believe. Let me... Yes, but you do try um, to explore new horizons as much as possible in that area. It tells me here that your handwriting is... Well, let's look at the memory balance here. Your handwriting is atrocious, very bad handwriting. But I guess that's not really um, such a bad thing as nowadays we've got typewriters and things like that that can work our way around that, so that's okay. Now we do know that there was potentially a problem um, with the eyesight itself. And ironically, the eyesight is round the back. It's not round the front. Right at the back of the head, there's a place that marks your courage. Yes, brave. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for just slightly below. Visual acuity. Yes, I can feel that there. I think there's a difficulty seeing things at a distance. Yes, we uh, tried before, didn't we, with the cards to, to practice it. The moon, I think we had last time, I always keep that one at the top. But there's a difficulty seeing a little bit in the distance. No shame in that. It's something, let me write this down. Right ascension 17, curvature 12. That will help with the eye examination and the production of the spectacles. Yes, no shame in that at all. Most people do need fixes when it comes to their eyesight. Things tend to change. Anyway, over people's lifetimes. Lady Violet Wedgwood uh, is a customer of mine. She uh, requires glasses. You probably wouldn't realize that. And I probably shouldn't really be telling you this. Unfortunately, there are no data protection laws back now. But they... She doesn't wear them in public, but she does need them for distance. So you might see sometimes when she's at the races or such, she might put her spectacles on. So she has a similar type of lump there for sure. Now, another area we were talking about your um, stress. So another area is moral sentiment. Can you see that there? That's the moral sentiment. And the moral sentiment links here to the selfish sentiment. And on the ridge between that is something called the perfecting group. Yes. Now how these three things come together, and it'll take me a little bit of time to find, I'm afraid, because it's a, a little bit finessing, but it will tell me how your worries How your worries manifest themselves. Quite balanced, actually. That's uh, very good. It's like, I wouldn't say I've felt such a balance since Lord Marlborough. Very stoic man, but very uh, emotional at the same time. No, I like this. This is, uh, this is good. It suggests that you have more of a general anxiety, and it's not necessarily something that um, can easily move around and so will be more difficult to treat when it comes to our hypnotic approach, okay? So that is very good. It's not directly related, but I would like to look at your patriotism here and your independence here. So you can see independence and patriotism. Independence. 
Very good. That feels, let me write that down. Right, Ascension 25. And a curvature of six, you know, that is almost the exact same as Queen Victoria. She has the same right ascension and curvature. Remarkably independent lady. Quick-witted. Um, quite charming. So um, that reflects very well on you. Let me just check the other part there. Nothing of note, I don't think. No, that's good. It's actually, if you see any curvature there, then that's the negative side of it. So that's very good. Now there's an adaptiveness um, here at the top, and this adaptiveness will be very useful to understand to understand how effective candle therapy will be for you and sound therapy. Okay. Adaptiveness. Oh, it's very high. 37 as well, you know, this is some um, fantastic news. It means you're very susceptible. Um, not gullible, I wouldn't use that word. Susceptible to um, treatments that might not necessarily be recommended um, in normal circumstances, which is fantastic. Actually, Dr. Uh, Jane Jekyll, who I used to work with quite a bit before the accident, she um, had very, very high adaptability, hence her ability to um, work with potions and medicines. So quickly her body would adapt very quickly to things. And uh, yes, very wise woman. Okay, I will try one last thing. And this is just a, a general. This is the last, 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 last thing. And this is just a general. It's to do with your financial astuteness. Okay, financial astuteness is approximately in this area, next to the sublimity. Very, very, very impressive. You, um, you have a head for business. It's a um, similar reading to Lord Howard Harkin, who was, um, you know, that famed industrialist before, or that business with the, um, yes, well, no, that's a very, very good sign. So we've made our general observations now. It is interesting, isn't it, how this is so detailed on this side. Lots and lots and lots and lots of little bits here. Lots and lots of bits. And yet, on this side, very level. It's almost as if he just couldn't really be bothered and just sort of gave up halfway through. But that isn't the case. No, he was a great man of great science. And um, this is just how it is. Okay. Yes. Come the old, come the new. This is the science of palmistry. Okay, now when we look at palmistry, we look at specific lines that you might have. Okay? And when we see these lines, they translate based off, well, you could base it off whether the line is, it depends on the line. But if it's long, or short, or if it's broken, or sometimes if it's missing even, or potentially a faint line. Um, all of these things build up a lovely picture for us of how somebody is. So you're going to have to give me a hand. Yes, I should keep this on hand for reference at all times. You're going to have to give me a hand and I shall make notes.
very. Very good. Right, so just give me your head here. Okay, and if you could just lay it flat on this uh, silk cushion. Right. And I am going to, in some cases, use my hand, in some cases, use my poker to take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is your lifeline. A lifeline isn't what it sounds like. It's not something where it tells you how long somebody's going to live or anything like that. No, that would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? It's the idea that uh, your hands can tell you something like that. No, they tell you other things though, for sure. Now let's have a look. Right, I can see here. It's like a hand. Right, so it's going to give me some insight into your life's journey. Again, as I say, it's not meant to be interpreted. Not meant to be interpreted as the line's life. Now you have quite a short lifeline. Good job it isn't life, isn't it? And that suggests that you are quite self-sufficient, quite independently minded, which is, uh, I think, the best way to be. There are a few breaks in the hand, which suggests a certain number of disappointments that have come through your life. Perhaps these disappointments are something we can tidy away using our hypnotic sound therapy. It looks quite thick, um, which means you're not a low energy person. It doesn't necessarily mean you're a high energy person, but uh, yes. If you were a high energy person, you would have more than one. It would look thick but it would look like several strands not just thick so that would mean you're probably a very high energy person full of life very active but i would say you fit somewhere between the two which is very good now the next thing we're going to look at here let me write that down first so i don't forget Yes. Now the next thing we're going to look at here is your heart line. Your heart line is just across here. And it will tell us a little about, well, love. Romantic things such as that. I think this is going to be a little bit uh, informative. Pass me your hand there. Right. So it deals in all matters of the heart and commitments and romance. Now, your line starts below the index finger. No, that's good. That suggests contentment and stability. Yes. And it is a long line, which suggests that you are capable of healthy relationships, which is nice. And it's also a straight line, which means you're very much in touch with your feelings. Very, very good. Let's make a note of that. In touch with feelings. Now we do have something else now called the sun line. We will see the sun line across over here. Yes, can you see that there? Yes, sunline. Perfect, and the sunline, it's also referred to sometimes as Apollo's line, or the line of intricacy. Yes, it sounds very mystical, it is quite mystical actually. It's to do with your public image and the legacy that you may have. Okay, let me look at this here. I can see that you are going to have a fantastic legacy. Isn't that wonderful? It's a fantastic legacy. And you are going to have a public image, yes, and also success, yes. The public image is a little bit vague, it's a little bit 
chopped up, which suggests at some points you're going to be looked upon very favourably because of the other two facets, but sometimes not so much. So we'll go up, go down a little bit, but you are destined for success, which is wonderful. Let me take a note. Destined for success. Good public image. Right, this is what we're here for. Okay, health line. You can see the health line is just here. Yes, very good. Now the health line is believed to to a certain degree to show how potentially how healthy you might be looking at certain weaknesses and things like that that we might want to stop. Now, your hand is wavering, which is okay. It means you might have one or two things that might, might need to be fixed. That's perfectly normal. If it's forked, then we have a little bit more of an issue. Um, but no, that looks good. There is some a circling here, I can see. Circling tends to be something which could be a recurring or a lasting problem. And I think given that it goes just slightly above your material line, what we're seeing here are the eyes. So we're seeing potentially the problem here with the eyesight. But we already knew that. So that's something we've already got on our list to fix. So that's fine. It's just nice to have these things confirmed, isn't it? Very good. Now we're going to quickly do now your girdle of Venus. Now the girdle of Venus, it's actually found only in a few hands. And of course, the girdle of Venus is found here. Yes. Very good. Now let me have a look at your... Very slight, but it is there. Most people don't have it. It means you have... Um, it doesn't matter how obvious it is. If it's there, it's there. And it suggests you have some artistic ability that you're either progressing now or that you will progress soon in the future. That tells us nothing, really. I don't know why I checked that. Because it really hasn't got anything to do with your health. But now we're going to check your fate line. And it shows events that might be beyond your control or things that um, might be coming. This very inaccurate line. Almost all of the lines are very um, precise, um, but not the fate line. So the fate line is located just here. Yes. So that's where I'll be checking. Right. Let me have a look. Let me I'm just grab your hand here. You have a double fate line. Both of them are faint. That's good. It means there will be an element of predictable and unpredictableness to your life. And any life, in my opinion, worth living has both predictable and unpredictable elements. It also suggests, again, which backs up our previous observations, that you are going to be a success in life. Which I think is just wonderful, don't you? We're going to look now at your headline. Headline is going to tell us a little bit about your intellectual pursuits. It's going to tell us a little bit about your ambition. Okay. And if we look, the headline is located here um, on the hand. Right. Let me have a look. What can I see here? Um, it's slightly broken, which means you have had some struggles. It's extremely wavy which means you are an extremely innovative person. That's very nice. Very progressive thinking person, which I love. It is a fairly longish line, which suggests either you are filled with ambition or you are not aware of your ambitions, but they're going to become to fruition and make you a successful person. The curvature is strong as well. And I would say that suggests a good significant richness with regards to 
creativity. So isn't that nice? Let's just make a note of that. And of course, finally, we have the bracelets. And the bracelets are round about here. That's where we keep them. Yes. Now they don't appear on the palm. Of course, they appear on the wrist. Um, but they still provide cru crucial information for us to about our spiritual well-being. Your lines are deep. They are bold. And we I don't see any of them missing, which means you're going to have a healthy and prosperous life. Isn't that lovely? You have a very impressive palm reading um, hands for sure. These have, uh, have got some fantastic results. I'm just going to finish my notes. Done the mounds. Also, very positive results throughout. Yes, very good. So this is wonderful. We have done a full phrenol phrenol phrenology check. We have done our palmistry check. I have a list here of all the other um, diagnostic checks that we made the first time we met. Check, 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 check. I think we have more than enough to be getting on with. Yes, I think we have more than enough to get. I don't, I don't think I would recommend any further testing. I think we're just into the procedures now. We're into our candle therapy. We're going to be into our hypnotherapy. We're going to be doing a little bit of sound therapy. Mm -hmm. Very nice sound. Certain frequencies can be very healing. Yeah. So, yes, I'm happy with that. I'm going to give you, again, I think this is, your employer is paying for this, correct? Very good. So I'm going to write a little receipt out saying, head examined, no major concerns. Continue with suggested courses of action. Very good. Can you do this? Right. Very good. Um, yes, so Nurse Ratchet there, if you want to uh, pop across, she'll help you make some appointments for our next visit. Yes, I look forward to it. I think next time we should probably go for the eyesight, I think. Quite important, because you will do be doing some other therapies that might require a little bit of seeing. And I think your job, you, you use your eyes in your job quite a bit, don't you? Yes, I thought so. That makes sense. So yes, what we'll do next is we'll do a nice eye exam for you. And uh, until then, as always, dreadfully nice. And I shall um, see you post haste. Thank you. Very good. It does seem like he just sort of gave up, didn't he? Well, he always told me it worked, so I'm just going to have to try.